Hey everyone, this is Meyer, and in this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to write easy trance melodies in five simple steps. This is going to be the melody we're going to be making in this video. So take a listen. All right, so to go ahead and get started, what I'll do is tell you the five steps and then we'll go through making the melody. So step number one, what we wanna do is choose a chord progression. This is going to set the harmony for our track. You can either make one yourself or use one that's been used in a lot of other tracks. Nothing wrong with that. You can't copyright a chord progression. You'll often find that really popular tracks tend to use very similar ones, quite frankly, because they work. Step number two, what we're going to do is choose a rhythm pattern. This is going to be the rhythm that your lead follows. Step number three, what we're going to do is transpose our rhythm pattern to match the harmony or match the chord progressions we chose in part one. This is really important. So we're following the chords and that kind of gives us a direction or a sort of a path or lets us tell a story. Step number four, then what we're going to do, this is kind of the fun part, the creative part. We're going to adjust the top notes of that arpeggio or that rhythm pattern to actually create a melody. And we're going to use a harmony and the chords to inform what notes we wanna pick when we're not really sure, but also this is where we get to use our ear and sort of just see what feels right or what sounds good. And lastly, step number five, this is pretty easy. We wanna just transpose it to our key of choice. If we're working with the vocalist, we may already have some keys that are picked out for us, or what may end up happening is the bass note of our track may actually dictate what sounds are gonna sound good on a club type of sound system. So that's the other thing we wanna think about as well. So let's go ahead and get started with step number one. What I've done here is set up this basic logic project where I have this basic super saw lead and a sub pad. So for step number one, we need to choose a chord progression. Now what I've done here is in the description, I've linked to this MIDI pack I've made with Ready for Masterclass, which under the sub pads has over 150 different chord progressions all taken from released trance tracks. I encourage you to be able to make your own and practice making your own, but um, if you want just to get a head start or you wanna start with something that's already worked, um, nothing wrong with that. All of these I've spent years analyzing and kind of categorizing, and these all have been transposed to A minor or C major, so they're only gonna use the white keys on the keyboard, which is just helpful if you're not sure how to play in every single key, you kind of can use some of the same relationships or the same ideas of how chords work without needing to recalculate everything. So um, let's go ahead and just find something that I think may work well. I, I mean, a lot of these are really good. A lot of these are gonna work really well for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and choose, I don't know, one, six, three, five. I don't know. So I'm going to drag this in here and it's going to put it here. It may ask you to import the tempo information. I'm going to click no, and I'm making sure my tempo here as at 138. So this is what we have. And I'm putting this on the sub pad, which is going to form sort of the base. It's gonna play the root notes, which is the baseline of our progression. Now what I'm gonna do is move on to selecting a rhythm pattern. So I'm gonna go back in my MIDI pack. I have these rhythm patterns, there's over 50. Once again, you know, they're pretty standard ones that you can use. There's nothing really special or magical about this. It's just, you know, there's some that tend to work that tend to be used quite a bit and just because of the rhythm between upper and lower notes. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select one of these and drag it in like this. Now this isn't gonna follow the chords, but let's go ahead and listen to what we have. So what we need to do now in step number four is actually, or actually step number three, sorry, we need to transpose this to fit with the chords that we have. And I'm gonna just bring this back down to eight bars. So I'm gonna select them both. I'm gonna take these notes. And the first thing I'm gonna do is bump them down an octave. So I'm gonna hold down Alt and Shift, press the down arrow, and there we go. And from here, we just need to select these and transpose them to match the chords. What I'm looking for are these bottom notes. So I'm holding down Alt, pressing the down arrow, I'm gonna select these guys. 
press the down arrow. In fact, actually, all we really care about is this first four bars because our, our chord progression is technically only four bars long here. That's not super uncommon. So we go one, six, that's the G. Then we go up to the three, which is gonna be the C. So if I select this and, oops, I accidentally selected that note. C, and then we go down to the E. That's what this is gonna be. So what I'm gonna do is just loop this by dragging the loop, and then I'm gonna hit Command, Command J. Oops, another easier way to do this, actually hold down and click Alt and drag, and then hit Command J to glue it together as a single pattern, like so. So now this is what we have. Doesn't sound great at all. The reason for this is not all these notes are in the scale. So the real easy way to fix this is to just select these notes and we're just going to choose C major Ionian and you can hit this quantize button and this will quantize them all to be in the scale. This is now what we have. Now these are a little low, so I'm gonna select this, Command A and hit Command, Alt and Shift, bump this up an octave. So now we're working in a more familiar octave range for our lead. So one thing to note are which notes tend to sound good when we move on to step four, which is adjusting particularly these top notes. Now, this is a third. A third is you start on the root note, which is A, and you just move up to semitones. That's a third, it sounds like this. Let's just start it from the beginning. Actually, one of the things I like doing, I right click on the play is click play from last locate position and deselect play from cycle. So that way, if I click a place like here at the beginning, it'll always restart back to where I clicked before, which was really helpful for when you're changing notes in the melody at a certain point to seeing what it sounds like. So this is what the third sounds like. This is what the, the tonic sounds like, or the, or the one. And the other one that sounds tends to sound pretty good is this fifth, which would be starting from the A, you would go up four, which would be up to the E. So let's go ahead and Start on that third. I think I like this third on the C, and we can go ahead and see how how we can we can create this to be a nice sounding melody. So the first thing I'm noticing, it may sound good to kind of have these notes transition from one chord to the next, like this. And I think this is too big of a jump from here. So if I'm playing this E, my options for the E are either the, well, the notes that I may try to gravitate around are this E, could be this G, or the B. I think I'm gonna move this up to that B. Let's listen now. And I may want to have this step down as well. Let's listen. So that's sounding pretty good. Um, there are a few things we can probably change to make this a little more interesting here, but I think we're off to a good start. Um, I like how this melody starts, so I may do this again. So maybe we'll stay on that E for a little bit. Hey, 
maybe something like this. And now, what I really want to pay attention to is, does this naturally loop back? Now, most of these chord progressions that you see, most of the ones that are used or are popular, tend to have what's called a cadence, which means they naturally want to lead back to the beginning. But what's really important is that your melody or your chord progression wants to loop back into itself um, just naturally. So let's go ahead. One of the things we can do is just click on this and loop it for eight bars and just take a listen. And at this point, we could say, oh man, we're done. We've kind of made the melody. But what I like doing is making a 16 bar melody because chances are you're gonna be playing this several times. And if you're doing this over say 64 bars, an eight bar melody, you're gonna loop eight times. Whereas if you do it as a 16 bar melody instead, you're only gonna have the same thing playing four times. It's less repetitive, it's more interesting. Even some small changes to the melody can be one of those things that separates you know, a good producer from somebody who's really great and really puts a lot of thought and energy into it. So what we're gonna do is do the same thing, except now I'm gonna copy it and make some changes to this additional section. Now, I could leave this original, I could do this as A, B, A, C, where I leave bars nine through 13 alone. I could do that. Let's see how it sounds. I may just play it and make a judgment call from there. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna leave bars nine through 13 pretty much alone. And starting at bar 13, I may just do something a little bit different. So maybe we'll start on that fifth instead. And maybe here. And that C is gonna work well with the F because that C is the fifth of the F, so we get this sort of parallel movement between the bass moving down and the melody moving down. Yeah, maybe we'll bring this up to the G. So what I'm really listening for is to make sure this loops back nicely. I'm not 100% happy with the way this is now, but I'm just kind of listening to how I want this to lead back into it.
think what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna start this on the C. Now I think that sounds good. Let's go ahead and listen to the whole thing. Okay, I think I like the way that sounds. I'm pretty satisfied with it. It may not be the best melody, may not win any awards, but hopefully you get the idea of how this can work. Once again, if we put some more work into this, just more time, chances are you could get this really sounding pretty good. The main reason is this chord progression just works. And as a result, as long as you use some of the music theory, some of the intervals, you're gonna get something that's just effective. It's just gonna be effective, it's gonna work, it's gonna be fine. So at this point, we can move on to step five, which is just we simply take these notes and hit command A and we just transpose them to a place that works. Now, one of the things I'm noticing is this D is really high. It's probably a little too high. So I think I want to bring this melody down, maybe down to here. Let's go ahead and listen to what this sounds like. And the only thing I'm noticing is these bass notes are a little too low. So I'm just gonna hit shift, alt, and up so that they come up an octave so we're not going too deep into that lower sub range that no club systems can reproduce. And there you go. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download this template in case you just are interested, um, curious at poking around with it, looking at this melody and everything. Um, other than that, go ahead and check out my chord progression pack if you're interested on getting all these rhythm patterns and chord progressions. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.